tell you a little bit about our, our council to start off. Uh, we're part of MNR's community volunteer environmental program called the Ontario Stewardship. It is sponsored by the MNR, but we're not controlled by the MNR. We operate independent. It's founded on a model of collaboration and partnerships with existing community groups. We have no legislative uh, authority. We exert our influence through community cooperation and uh, collaboration with community partners. And our members are volunteers representing various uh, interest groups and uh, partners. Today I'm going to speak about the uh, Moon River water management and its impact <coughs> on the walleye fishery of eastern Georgian Bay. This is a Georgian Bay fishery. It's not uh, in, in the scope per se. This is the uh, <coughs> where the population spawns at the Moon River. This is the Moon Falls here. The spawning goes on in this vicinity. Uh, up to the, uh, to the east here is the Muskoka watershed and six miles or six kilometers to the west are the open waters of eastern Georgian Bay. The Muskoka watershed goes right up into uh, Algonquin Park as you know. It's uh, 1,800 square miles, an exceptionally large watershed. There are over 2,000 lakes covering 300 square miles and there's a 130 foot or 1,300 uh, foot drop in elevation between um, the top of the watershed at the park and, and uh, Georgian Bay. There are primarily uh, two major uh, river systems, the north branch of the Muskoka and the south branch of the Muskoka, which join at Lake Muskoka, flow through Bala, and thence out to Georgian Bay. On this particular schematic, there are 15 dams. I, I imagine there are probably more, but you can see that it's a very complex water system and one which would be difficult to manage the, the, uh, the water system. What we're particularly interested in is this geography that stretches from Bala over to Georgian Bay. This is where the Moon River walleye spa population spawn. The water coming out of Bala is what's known as the Bala Reach. And at this particular point, something very interesting happens. The river actually forks. The north branch becomes the Moon River, and the south branch is the Musquash River. Okay, so very important to note that there's a, a break in the river system here. And there's also an odd little thing that happens here at Go Home Lake. There's a portion that exits Go Home Lake out of uh, uh, the Go Home River system to Georgian Bay. How much water goes down the Moon River is largely dependent upon the operation of the Moon Dam located uh, just downstream of the Forks. And on the Musquash River system, you have the Rapid Rapids Generating Station at this location, the Big Eddy here. Water is preferentially directed down the Musquash River in the springtime for hydro generating purposes. What, hap what is, happens to the water level in the, in the Moon River at that time? Well, we're going to talk about that. Okay. <laughs> uh, I just want to give you a, a quick uh, and dirty um, uh, natural history of, of walleye reproductive strategies. They are spring spawners. They spawn at a temperature of 6 to 12 degrees. Moving water 0 0.6 to 0 0.9 cubic meters per second. That is not particularly fast. Okay, so they're not spawning in really fast water. They're spawning in moving water, but not fast white water. They spawn over gravel, rubble, cobble in about two foot of depth. They are broadcast spawners. You can have about 55,000 eggs per kilogram of female. It's not uncommon to have, five me or, or to have females that are over five kilograms in size. So theoretically, you can have uh, a, a large female with over a quarter of a million eggs in her. Their strategy is one of mass production. They give no parental care. They have exceptionally high, mor high natural mortality of the eggs and the fry. Success is largely dependent on capricious natural uh, factors. Generally, you have poor to moderate year classes. And every once in a while, you will have a super year class, which is known as a boom bust cycle of reproduction. They are adapted to spawn in moderate to high flowing regime with slowly diminishing flow throughout the incubation period. The incubation period generally lasts from 10 to 16 days. They have a long spawning period of uh, approximately two weeks, and it helps to ensure that some portion of the eggs laid are laid under favorable conditions. Some years, eggs that are laid at the beginning of the spawning period will do better. In other years, eggs laid in the latter portion of the spawning period will do better. So it's good to have a, a, a wide range of uh, timing to uh, hopefully that some of your eggs will uh, find favorable conditions. 
So what do you need for a strong walleye year class? You need the stars to be perfectly aligned. <laughs> it's not something that happens on a regular basis. Assuming that you have high quality spawning habitat, you do not necessarily need a large spawning population. There have been many cases of super year classes coming out of small spawning populations. You need a favorable flow regime for spawning. You need a favorable water temperature. Very important and also not very often that you get a favorable water regime or water temperature regime. This is necessary for egg development but also equally important for food. You need abundant zooplankton production so that when those eggs hatch the fry have food right in front of their faces. They have very limited mobility to go after food so they need food in the form of zooplankton right in front of their faces to, to do well. You need an abundant food supply not only uh, at, the, at the fry stage but, out, but throughout the, the, their, their first summer uh, for them to feed upon. Walleye that feed heavily on other fish do much better than walleye that feed on uh, extended feeding on, uh, on, on pipe. You need low predation by natural predators, crappies, smelt, gobies are all predators on, on, on uh, walleye fry. It's a jungle out there. And the walleye are feeding on other fish, and other fish are feeding heavily on the walleye. And walleye year class is not established until after their first winter, when they're at the yearling stage. For all this to happen, it doesn't happen often. I'd like to, uh, I wanted to show you a, a flow regime for a, a natural spring freshet. And there's a website that you can go to at Environment Canada that has all of these uh, flow regimes um, throughout the province. Unfortunately, none of them are a natural flow regime. They're all on systems that are managed uh, by men. So I made my own up, and this is what I imagined it would look like. In late March, generally in early April, you have a highly ascending curve where you're getting your snow melt. You may have some, uh, some rain events. What, the, the water is um, increasing considerably in, in the discharge. And then you have a peak which may last two, three, four days. And then after that, a gently descending curve as the water uh, at the peak goes into the wetlands adjacent to the rivers and into your marshes and uh, uh, swamps. And then over the course of uh, an extended period of time, it's then slowly released on the downside of the, uh, of, of the freshet curve here. This is the period that we're particularly interested in. This is the period when walleye spawn in mid to late April. And note, it is on the descending portion of the curve. They do not spawn, not normally anyways, when, when uh, the curve is at its peak. This is the incubation period, which is a bit longer. You've got about uh, 10 to 16 days after eggs are laid. So it extends from mid-May in, into, uh, into, into or excuse me, from late April, or mid-April into, into late May. Under normal circumstances, you would have a freshet that would take up a period of approximately two months, starting late March and the water level not returning to normal levels until sometime in late May. That period is much contracted uh, in, in systems that are managed. And the reason being is all these dams on it. Th this is the, uh, the dam that's right in the town of Puri Sound where I live. It's a good illustration that there are three control sluiceways here, this one, um, the, the remote gate, and, and this one here. All of those have logs out and it's flowing maximum. A week later, this is what it looks like. All the logs are in, the gate's down, and flow is much diminished. The closest I could come to a natural flow regime would be, uh, I thought, at the Magnetowan River at Highway 69. This is a controlled system, the Magnetowan River. However, there is a, a large lake, uh, Wawashkesh Lake, which has a plug dam that has no, uh, no sluice waves, no logs. It's a plug dam which simply holds water back at a, at a predetermined level to sustain that level throughout the summer period. And that plug dam uh, acts as dampening out as the water level goes up. Uh, you can't get any more water over that plug dam. There's no sluice waste to open up. It's just what naturally flows over. So this is a close approximation of how you would see a normal spring, which is a smooth descending curve, a peak, and then a smooth descending curve. In late April here, we've had a bit of a rain event and, and water has gone up. You will note how smooth that curve is. 
the walleye, spring, the walleye population at Moon River, these are estimates that have been generated by the Ministry of Natural Resources from about 25 to 30,000 in the, the late 60s, diminishing down to about 2,000 in their latest estimate in 2005. There are some fairly wild confidence limits that I admitted, but it illustrates that the population has decreased dramatically. Prior to 1968, we really don't know what the population was, but it's fairly safe to assume that it was probably larger. There are good anecdotal records of this being a world-class walleye fishery at one time. So one of the problems that the Moon River faces, it has an unnatural regulated flow regime, historic sport and commercial fishing, which is quite high, changing ecology, numerous invasive species over the past 20 years, and a small spawning area. There are other potential problems such as logging, poaching, habitat degradation, acidification. These are considered not likely. So these four are the, the most important uh, stressors on the fishery, and we're gonna speak particularly to number one here. When I first started my career with the Ministry of Natural Resources in Perry Sound, the first place I went was the Moon River. So this particular photo was taken in the early 1980s. And I asked you to pay attention to this log right here as a potential benchmark. Um, the problems that were experienced in the early 1980s are still pre prevalent and, and relevant to the Moon River today. A number of days later, this is the same spawning area. Here's our log up here. This is my partner at the time, Jim Hoyle. And he's pointing to one of these vernal pools that has walleye eggs in it. This is landlocked, those fish can't get out of there, and uh, they, they're, they're destined for death. Other places like this little rock pile where walleye eggs may be, or are likely deposited, are also subject to uh, desiccation and death. This is Jim pointing to where the wetted perimeter was formerly, just a few days prior. So any spawning habitat between where the water is now and where it was formerly, those eggs are, are destined for death. This is what uh, these vernal pools look like. These are the, the dead walleye eggs. They become white and are quite apparent. What's not apparent is there are also and probably live walleye eggs in here. These are translucent and are, are, are very difficult to see. You can see this at virtually any walleye spawning site in, in the province. These large number of dead eggs, it's a natural phenomenon, nothing to, uh, you know, I'm not pointing to what to water management as being directly uh, the result of, of, of water management. I just wanted to point out that um, this is a natural phenomena that, that does occur. Okay, I want to take you back to this, uh, this relatively natural looking um, flow curve at the Magnetowan River and compare it to what happens at the Moon River. This is the Moon River this year. This, so this is uh, um, Real time, this is, uh, I, I took this off the, the internet last night. You can see the freshet started very early this year, March the 11th, reaches a peak about March 28th at about 80 CMS, and has now diminished down to around just under 20 and is holding steady. Although this doesn't look too good for walleye, it's very uh, irregular. Spawning has probably started mid-April and, and is continuing as we speak, and at least the flow on the Moon River is consistent right now and, and probably sufficient. So um, conditions aren't, aren't particularly bad. I'd like to show you some, some other years and, and problems that have been associated with it. This is 2009. The area shaded here is, is the walleye spawning and incubation period, a highly detrimental flow regime to walleye. You can see you're getting 200 CMS. A few days later, you're down to, to 40, back up to 140, and then subsequently down to uh, less than 20. There is no walleye population in the province that can successfully spawn under this kind of a highly fluctuating water regime. Moving on to, to 2008, this was a year of uh, record uh, high flows on the moon. It reached 250 CMS. There's not much that can be done for walleye uh, to ameliorate the effects of water management under such high flow conditions. Slowly dropping, well not slowly dropping, going from 250 down to about uh, 20 or so uh, by, by June 1st. Not much that the, the, those managing the water system could do at that particular year. 
Uh, I, I draw your attention that the scale has changed on this particular slide in 2008. We're only going up to about 85 or, or 90 CMS here, uh, much less than the former uh, graph, which was up around 250. But nonetheless, you can see that walleye that are spawning when you're up at uh, 95 or 85 or 90 CMS, the conditions are quite different but a few days later when you're down at 20. So highly uh, um, unfavorable that it would drop that much, although certainly not as much as the previous one when it went from 250. Uh, again, the same situation here in 206, you're going from almost close to 200 CMS and a few days later you're down at 20 CMS. And one particularly egregious year, 2005, where you're up high when they're spawning, then it's dropping down, it's going back up, dropping back down. These spikes are highly detrimental to successful walleye reproduction. If you look at the Musquash River, you see a very different uh, picture, where during the walleye spawning period, the, the, the flow is essentially uh, very quite stable, and that's because water is preferentially being directed down the Musquash River at a maximum to generate um, hydro, hydroelectricity. There are signs that, that, that warn of the uh, highly fluctuating water on the Moon River. Walleye aren't reading this, and evidently some people aren't either. This was taken in 2007. These people are risking their lives camping at this location. Um, right now it looks like you're probably in the neighborhood of 20 CMS coming down. You see from some of those other years, this could greatly escalate in a matter of hours. And if it was in the middle of the night, I wouldn't want to be camping in that tent. So when the, uh, when the uh, Muskoka River Water Management Plan was formulated in 2006, and this is the document under which the, the Muskoka watershed is, is managed, um, it took into consideration many competing uh, interests. Um, probably and understandably, the highest interest or the highest uh, priority was given to flood control and public safety. Um, no doubt. That's a, a, a key, a, a key objective of the uh, of the plan is to manage these, um, the, you know, this particular factor. Cottage and property damage also considered. Hydropower production, recreation, navigation, ecological and aquatic objectives. We contend that unfortunately at the time the Moon River walleye fisheries interests were not given the weight that we believed that they were deemed, um, and I don't think there was any. Uh, malicious oversight on the part at the time those interests just weren't brought to the attention of, of those working on the plan. So what does the plan actually say about the Moon River population? The operating strategy will target a minimum of 14 CMS at Moon Falls during the spawning period. So we have a guaranteed minimum of 14 CMS which is not inconsequential, it is satisfactory for walleye spawning and incubation to occur, which is highly beneficial. And MNR and Ontario Power Generation will utilize an adaptive management approach to address outstanding data gaps and issues. And to the credit of the MNR, this has been done. And, and the MNR has made um, considerable efforts to modify the management of the uh, of the, the management of the dams at Ballard for the purpose of assisting with reproduction on the Moon River system. We think that further advances can be made, but to their credit, they have, they have done this. So what's the problems on the Moon River? Too much, too little, significant fluctuations, or all of the above? Well, some years you have too much water, some years you have too little, but those are largely natural phenomena. Where we think the best uh, improvements can be made in water management is in significant fluctuations. So we want to take a year like 2005, which was a particularly egregious one, and try to smooth out that flow curve so that we take the spikiness, the, the peaks and the valleys out of, the, uh, uh, out of the, the flow regime and make it more beneficial for, for walleye reproduction. In 2008, we uh, rehabilitated the spawning beds, enlarged significantly, but more importantly, provided spawning habitat throughout the full range of historic flows that happen on the Moon River. So there's spawning habitat during low years and during high years of flow on, on, on the Moon River. 
That was funded by uh, OPG and m and and the Canada-Ontario Agreement, much to their credit. We still think, though, that the flow regime needs to be modified to improve walleye reproduction. The Muskoka, the Musco Lake Muskoka Rural Curve, this is from the uh, Muskoka River Water Management Plan. Um, somewhat complicated here, but some of you may be familiar with this. This is the uh, flood level, the red line up here. The, the yellow lines represent the operating zone in which MNR tries to keep the, the water on Lake Muskoka. And the green line is the target operating level. Most MNR water management objectives have been to keep Lake Muskoka on this green line during the spring freshet. Our recommendation is to use, and, and by the way, I shouldn't say just our recommendations, but in consultation with the Ministry of Natural Resources, they are amenable to using the full range of the, operati of the operating zone to try and manage the, the flow regime down the Moon River to better optimize quality production. So the purpose of this pre presentation is to increase public awareness and understanding of the consequences of water management activities as they relate to the Moon River. By increasing that understanding, lay a foundation for acceptance for future modifications to the flow regime. Promote modifications to water management strategies that more closely emulate a natural flow regime. We want, we, we, we're encouraging the ministry to try and operate the system in what looks like a more uh, a more natural regime, under which, by the way, while I have obviously uh, um, e evolved uh, over many millennia. And if required and appropriate, formulate these modifications when the Muskoka River Water Management Plan is next reviewed in 2016. Uh, another interesting aspect is this spawning site is also a location where uh, Lake Sturgeon spawn, a threatened species, and certainly any benefits that we can uh, generate for walleye reproduction will also accrue to Lake Sturgeon. So if there are any questions, I'd be happy to try and answer them. I, I must have missed, uh, if you go back a few slides, you said they'll keep a minimum of 14 centimeters. Uh, I don't know. Oh, I'm, so. yeah, uh, I apologize. It's, it's very easy to inadvertently fall into jargon not realizing that those in your uh, 14 C CMS, that's cubic meters per second. Oh, okay. okay. And, and, and by the way, 14 cubic meters per second translates into approximately 500 uh, cubic feet. So it, it's not an inconsequential amount of water. And, and, and it, is, it is adequate, not, not highly desirable, but it is adequate to make the need, meet the needs of spawning and incubation in the Moon River. Thank you. Yes? You touched briefly on the sturgeon. Now, keeping within the range that has been prescribed, will that enhance the ability of the sturgeon to reproduce, or is it exclusively for the walleye? It was meant exclusively for the walleye. And the problem that the sturgeon have, and the reason for which they don't get as much benefit, is they spawn later than walleye. So they're spawning mid-May, the incubation period is going well into June. There is no obligation to provide water down the Moon River into June. So now you're getting leakage through the dam. Um, however, um, I, I am advised that there are negotiations going on between M&R and OB, OPG to, to address that. So sometime in the, in the future, um, we're going to see some improvements in that regard. Thank you. I, I have a question, and maybe I, I don't uh, have something clear. Is um, you have spiky discharges from the dam? Yes. Okay, so those spikes are caused by discharges from the dam, sort of erratic discharges from the dam. But the dam themselves must be, be there for uh, water control purposes as well as hydroelectric. So if you're not discharging that spike, then it must be backing up above the dam gates. Well, a absolutely, Valerie. So um, and, and, then, and part of the, the spikiness is related to it's the logs are all in or several logs are out. Right. And, and we're suggesting that 
rather than when it comes time to put, you know, you're reaching your, the level that you want to be at, instead of putting all the logs in to, to keep it at that level, you will leave a few out and stay below that level. Right. And, and, and this will help to take the spikiness, as I call it, off, off, of, the, off of the flow regime. Okay. In, in fact, um, you can easily modify some of those, uh, th those, those flow curves to discharge the same amount of water, but you're doing it over a longer period of time. Now, it's easy for me to stand here and say, uh, in, in retrospect, how to do that. Because when it's happening in real time, you don't know if you've got another rain event coming a few days down the road that's going to now that you've been uh, that that's going to cause you problems. So it, it, it's natural that the 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 uh, um, the management strategy has been one of caution, especially caution as it relates to potential flooding upstream. And, and the ministry has indicated to us that they are willing to accept. Uh, a higher degree of risk to manage more for the benefit of, of water reproduction downstream. Because you have to keep your reservoirs at a sort of peak level in the spring uh, because of low flow augmentation in the fall. They're going to. Yeah. So you, you've got a really it, good balancing a, act. It's a very delicate balancing act. And, and I wouldn't want to diminish the. Uh, um, the good job that the ministry has done in that regard in the past. But the balancing act in the past has been with the high priority of flood control and infrastructure, uh, um, you know, preventing flooding to infrastructure. Yeah. We want them to give a higher priority to downstream moving river water reproduction. Absolutely. And, and I, 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 um, it's a very difficult task they have. Yeah. And I wouldn't want to diminish their, their uh, considerable efforts in the past to, to, to juggle all of those interests on things. Just one thing. Okay. Just, um, there was one graph you had that you pulled off the, the web last night for the flood regime and for the Moon River. And you said it was not too bad. And so given the way this spring unfolded, which was kind of crazy. Yes. Um, any further comments on that? I thought well, it would have been a bit we, more. We currently have... Um, uh, a little under 20 CMS going down the Moon River. That has been maintained throughout the spawning and incubation period. And, and that's why I say it, it's not too bad. But you'll notice in, in the period preceding that, there was quite a, a large discharge and over a, a fairly lengthy period of time. Um, it, it could be that they might want to risk manage for higher levels on Lake Muskoka, knowing that there's very little uh, snow in the watershed, not as much snow melt to come down and little rain in the forecast. So you might want to keep a higher level on Lake Muskoka, knowing that you're going to have to be giving the Moon River 20 CMS for the next uh, three weeks. Yeah, Lake Muskoka is a bit high right now. Well, I'm, I'm glad you're here. Lake take some of that back if you could. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're down about 12 centimeters. Centimeters. <laughs> Send it back, right? Okay.